bringing the people behind our food to life. Look how cute these are. The little roots coming through there. A lot of people have heard of hydroponics before, and the first thing they think of is, ooh, the tomato, that doesn't taste good. Mmm. It's really good. Hydroponics has gotten, you know, a bad rap for taste and for many other reasons. But growing in that soilish medium, you have to add some kind of nutrient to it to feed the plants. Um, and that nutrient normally is a petroleum-based nutrient in a chemical form. So the difference between hydroponics and aquaponics is the introduction of fish. It's not aquaculture. It's not just fish farming. When you add the two together, that's when you get magic. And the magic is it replicates a, a symbiotic relationship in nature. So the fish actually provide those nutrients now for those plants. The plants take up the nutrients and then clean the water back for the fish. So it's this wonderful relationship between the two. Put her back down in there. I grew up in one of those rural areas that people don't even think exist in the United States anymore. We were subsistence farmers, even though we weren't considered farmers because we only had three acres to grow all of our produce. And where I grew up in that area, you know, we're big grain farmers or dairy farmers or hog farmers. So I've been immersed in food, in growing food, cooking food, preserving food since I can remember. These are um, pak choy. So I decided to open my own company. And aquaponics was a good entree because it's year-round growing. But I had open businesses before and I want to take this one more slowly, want to make sure I really understood everything I'd be getting into. And we made the decision we're going to build backyard units first. We're going to learn step by step. I feel very confident as a business person, I feel very confident as a grower, but aquaponics is a little bit different. And I want to make sure that I kind of got all of those mistakes out before I invested a huge amount of money. So and this is just a what they call an air stone and this is what uh, aerates the water for the fish. The technology of aquaponics is definitely there. I think that's what attracts some people to it. For me, it's what definitely was like, oh, God, you know, I can't assemble, you know, anything. This also brings the water from the bottom um, to the top to recirculate it. In my case, a couple things. Number one, I had someone show me how to build a very simple aquaponic system just with two small little aquariums. And that helped take that whole thing away. It just showed, okay, we're gonna have circulating water, we're gonna have plants, and we're gonna have fish. So that really reduced the intimidation. The fish, I say, for me, were the largest learning curve, more so than the technology or the plumbing. What happens is that you can kill them very easily, and I will attest I've, I've done this. I did not want to, but I did, it's happened. And you can get these at any aquarium store or online, and then it has um, your little testing there. You know, once you get the system up and built, or if you have someone build it for you, it's going to run, and it runs beautifully. You learn how to take a water test, but it's really learning that incredible living system of how fish react. This is a bluegill. I think a safe fish for, depending on what region, but it seems like a safe fish for a lot of regions, would be catfish. Catfish can take extremely warm temperatures, they can take cold temperatures, they can take clear water, they can take muddy water. Fishies, fishies, come on. And so I just think that seems like a good, good fish for a lot of people to get introduced with. Tilapia, if you are in the southern states where it doesn't hit ever freezing, okay. you know, or near that equator, tilapia is a great fish. They're very resilient. If you like learning, you learn a whole bunch. You learn a lot. Um, and so it's been an exciting journey in that way. We're just starting to get the fruit to go on these. It's easier to see on... This one, a lot of the fruit is just starting to develop. The little blossoms there. Food doesn't seem to be the conversation that comes up often enough. What happens if a disaster strikes? Where are we gonna get those food? So I want people to feel confident they can grow. I want them to feel a little bit more secure in both endeavors. Um, I want everything to be as hyper-local as possible. I'd like to see all the transportation miles taken out. Instead of food miles, we have food feet that we're measuring our food by. So aquaponics has opportunity to help fill a gap. It's not the answer to everything, but it gets me excited to know that there's a low cost entry into producing food. I envision for 
our city here and cities around the nation that we start grow having growing hubs in every neighborhood. I think it would just be awesome when you see that vacant lot that we think just is an eyesore for the city. Also now it has an incredible greenhouse on it or has some other hoop house, a structure on it and we're growing food. So yeah, it's about empowering. It's about empowerment for me to sustain myself and have an incredible business. But every neighborhood should have the opportunity to grow their own food. Majority of people who are doing aquaculture hydroponics in an enclosed building have problem with humidity. By controlling the environment, I can recover all that heat energy from the water and put it back into my pond, which cuts down my expenses of maintenance.